Top of the morning to you, Mary. Morning, O'Hara. And how did your health this fine day, my love? Tis better than your blarney, you should know. May the devil take you. <laughs> nothing in here except wrapped packages. Uh, where do you get this stuff about Annie the Shop? That's who she is, Mr. Gillard. I've seen her poster. I'd know Annie the Shop anywhere. Well, here, I'd like to see her prove she's not. Uh, madam, do you have any identification, please? Definitely. Thank you, madam. Uh, this is J.P. Collingsworth, 1845 Primero Road. <laughs> Your husband couldn't be. It's such a wild coincidence. You certain? You mean your husband's name is Mayor John, John P. Collingsworth? Now I guarantee you, Mike, you are on the carpet. The mayor's called me five times. I don't know what to tell him. Tell him the truth. I know it was just a case of mistaken identity. It happens all the time. No, no, can't pass it off that easily. Now, the mayor's wife was virtually accosted on a crowded street in broad daylight and accused of being a shoplifter by your daughter. All right, I'll call the mayor personally, and I'll have Mike write a letter of apology to his wife. Will that get you off the hook? Well, yeah, that ought to do it. Now, what did you call her? Who? Your daughter. Oh, you mean Mike? Yeah, Mike. That's her name? Yeah, well, I guess I'm to blame for that. You see, after she was born, the doctor told us we couldn't have any more children. Well, there's always been a Michael O'Hara around, so I insisted on the name. Figured we could always call her Michelle. And when my wife passed away, she was still little, and the kids started calling her Mike, and when she grew up, she liked it, so I'm stuck. Yeah. You know something? I think it suits her. Mm. Now, you make sure you call the mayor's office. As soon as I get back to my office. After what happened today, how do you get up the nerve to come in here? Well, it wasn't easy, but I said to myself, Mike, why ruin the carpets at home? There has to be blood on the floor. Why not down here at the station house where they're used to it? Very funny. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause you a problem. I know you don't mean to, but somehow you always do. Yeah, well, I guess I do, Dad, but this time it really looked like Annie the shop. You should have seen her. She... I know, and Mike, everybody looks like somebody else, and I always wind up looking like a fool. Well, I didn't mean for that to happen. You see, Dad, I was only trying to help. 
Will you believe me when I tell you I don't need your help? Yeah. I'm beginning to. Good. And it won't happen again. Good. So long. <laughs> The thing that's really stopping us is lack of concentration. You know, a few phony bills turn up on the north side, so we alert the local merchants and stake out a few agents, and then he hits us on the south side. We do the same thing there, and then he turns up in uh, Rivers Bend or Caraway Corners. Oh, the big hacks on the whole deal are the bills themselves. You know, you need a magnifying glass to spot a phony. What a set of plates this guy must have. Uh, that's Charlie Grady for you, a real pro. It'll take us a while to get him, but we'll put him away. Oh, have you got a tail in it? Yeah. Hmm. But as you say, he's a real pro. He knows when he's being watched. Oh, we shook him down a couple of times, but uh, he was clean. Mike, didn't you say you had a list of all the people in the area with the records? Oh, yeah. I left them in my coat. I'll get them. Oh, hi, Mike. I didn't hear you come in. Oh, you know me, Dad. I'm just the quiet type. Well, the quiet type, get ready for a surprise. Joe and Charlie are in town, and they're staying for dinner. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> this isn't Mike, is it? Mm-hmm. Mike, you grew a foot since I last saw you. You know, it's hard to believe this is the same scrawny kid that used to get in her dad's hair all the time. Well, she's not the same scrawny kid anymore, but she still gets in my hair all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you better go on upstairs and get dressed for dinner. Oh, Dan, I can't stay for dinner. Remember I told you I was going to go to Barb's tonight? Oh, that's right. Well, now, look, don't you kids go get me. Now, don't worry. Nothing's going to happen. Oh, I'm sorry that I can't stay for dinner, but you're just going to talk about business anyway, right? Okay, you run along. Okay, bye-bye. Stay out of trouble. Oh, for sure. Take it easy, Mike. Yeah, we'll see you, Mike. Boy, has she grown up. <laughs> she sure has. Charlie, I had these made up in triplicate in case you want to delegate them to some of the boys. I really think it's going to matter much, because we know who our man is. But then, sometimes the unexpected does happen. Well, I'm making book as Charlie Grady. Me too. <laughs> Mr. O'Hare, dinner's ready. Oh, thank you. Shall we? Charlie, you manage football? No, not lately, Mike. We think out of some of this basketball program. We work out once a week. You do, Joe? Yeah, they have uh, teams A, blue, and B, C teams. Really keeps you going, I'm telling you. I don't get out of <laughs> Yeah, that suit looks pretty good. Uh, chowder, I guess. It's a chowder. I don't know. I'm sure it was just uh, one more of the basketball court. Right uh -huh. <laughs> well, uh, talk about football. He's still playing football. Uh, Rex Parsons. Petty theft. Look at this. Convicted 1960. Given two years probation. Hey, isn't he that nice guy who works at Pete's gas station? Wake up. Yeah, yeah. No wonder they gave him probation. He's probably not even guilty. Mike, why are you worrying about it? I mean, the FBI has a copy. They'll check it out. They don't take these things seriously. To them, it's just routine. Why are you worrying about it? Because I have to get my dad off the hook. <laughs> That's a switch. What? You have to get your dad off the hook? It's a switch. Well, he's looking for the wrong guy. He thinks it's Charlie Grady. Heck, that doesn't make sense. Why would he come back to the same town where he was convicted and start up the same operation again? He'd have to be crazy. Hey, do you think someone's cashing in on the fact that Charlie's back in town? Exactly. Any counterfeiting that's going on, he's going to be blamed for, right? Yeah. He is a perfect pigeon for some smart operator. And I think the smart operator is right here on this page. Now let's go. Oh, oh, look at this one, will ya? Aristotle Marino, convicted of forgery in 1936, served one year state prison, convicted again 1940 for cashing $50,000 of worthless traveler's checks. Pleaded guilty and served five more years in state prison. Among other alias, sometimes known as Artie the Artist. Artie the Artist. You don't think it's that weirdo that runs the drugstore, do you? The same. Can you?
you imagine him, Artie the artist? Hey, you know, Mike, you might just have something. What? Well, look. Look, he's taken out this big ad in the paper. Huh, I mean, that must have cost him a bundle. As a new service to our customers, we're now cashing all payroll checks. With yeah. or without purchase? So while well, lots of stores cash payroll checks. Mm. Yeah. But they don't take out big ads to advertise it. He's yeah. cashing those checks with phony money. Yeah. Kind of all fits. Sure does. All right, this is what we have to do. One of us has to get a job down there. We've got to get something concrete on him. I guess the only one that could work down there would be someone like a soda jerk. Who do we know that's a soda jerk? Norman. 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 Norman, my boy, I have some more deliveries for you to make when you're through with the floor. That is, if you're not too busy at the counter. Yes, sir. Good boy. Norman is my darling. My darling. My darling. Norman is my darling. Norman is my boy. What's that all about? I don't know. He sure is weird. Yeah, he's a creep. I gotta get back to work. Norman, wait a minute. Norman. Norman, do you think you could watch him and find out the combination to that safe? Now, that would be almost impossible. It opens with a key. Norman, when you make deliveries, does he just give you the key to the truck? No, he gives me the whole keychain. Why? Norman, my boy, Mrs. Peterson wants the usual prescription right away, quick. Okay, Mr. Marino. Listen, I better go before we blow our cover. You're doing a great job. Thanks. Never mind, put that down and take this, or she'll be ringing that phone and my ears will fall off. Go on, wait a minute, wait. As long as you're going to Mrs. Peterson, take the rest of the prescriptions, too. 